All right, welcome back. Um, last night's homework was the section review one, two, and three, so I want to talk about them briefly. Um, so for problem one, which of the following exhibit parabolic motion? A, a flat rock skipping across a lake. B, a three-point shot in basketball. C, the space shuttle while orbiting Earth. D, a ball bouncing across a room, or E, a life preserver dropped from a stationary helicopter. For a, ball, for a flat rock skipping across in the air, it's going to have parabolic motion. So yes, a three-point shot is going to be flying through the air with parabolic motion as well. So yes, the space shuttle flying around Earth will get to the orbit, velocity turns out to be tangent, acceleration, tangential to its motion, acceleration towards the center due to gravity. But what we need to know for this is the space shuttle is going around the Earth in circular orbit. It's definitely not parabolic motion. And then D, a ball bouncing across the room. While it's bouncing, when it's in the air, it is definitely under parabolic motion, though my picture isn't perfectly parabolic. But it is parabolic motion. And a life preserver dropped from a stationary helicopter. It's in the air, that's true, but the acceleration and the velocity are both straight down. There's no X component. So there's going to be no acceleration, or sorry, no parabolic motion. So A, yes, B, yes, C, no, D, yes, and E, no. So we'll look at the second problem now. What the second problem says is, during a thunderstorm, a tornado lifts a car to a height of 125 meters above the ground. And then when it increases strength, it flings the car horizontally with a speed of 90 meters per second. How long does the car take to reach the ground? And how far horizontally does the car travel before hitting the ground? So I drew a picture with my car 125 meters in the air, and V initial in the x direction is 90 meters per second. So I'm going to write my knowns and unknowns. And in the x direction, I'm choosing my origin at the top with down as positive. So my initial x position is 0. My initial y position is 0. My final position in the x direction is unknown, but in the y direction, my final position is 125 meters. That's positive. My initial velocity in the x direction is 90 meters per second, and this is important. The initial velocity in the y direction is zero. That helps us stay away from a quadratic in the y direction, but there's no acceleration in the x direction there is acceleration of 9.8 meters per second positive in the y direction and time is unknown in both directions. So I want to talk a little bit about why I chose the coordinate system in red. I chose down as positive because the initial velocity is zero. The acceleration is downward and the change in position is downward. So if I choose down positive, all of my y values, including time, end up as positive. We can easily do this problem or do it almost as easily as this if we choose the ground and up as ground as the origin and up as positive. But then we're going to have uh, some several negatives throughout the problem. Acceleration due to gravity will be negative, delta y will be negative, and it makes things just a very small amount more difficult. Um, so we choose origin at the top just to simplify. So if we use our first equation of motion, y equals y initial plus v initial y t plus one half a t squared. y initial and v initial y go to zero, so we have y equals one half a t squared and t is going to equal the square root of 2y over a. That is, we multiply both sides by 2, divide both sides by a, and take the square root of both sides. And then when we do that, we get the square root of 2 times delta y, 125 meters, over 9.8 meters per second. 
had we chosen the ground as the origin and up as positive, our displacement would have been negative there, but the acceleration due to gravity would have also been negative. So we would have got the same answer, it would have just looked a little different. We still get 5.051 seconds. Now we're going to move to the x direction and use x equals x initial plus vix times t. We're just going to use our initial velocity in the x direction and our time in the air to solve for how far this thing goes. And it's going to go 90 meters per second times 5.051 seconds and it will go 454 meters in the air and it was in the air for five seconds. So that leads us to the third problem which is an Alaskan plane. It's very similar. An Alaskan rescue plane drops a package of emergency rations to a stranded party of explorers as illustrated in figure 18. The plane is traveling horizontally at 30 meters per second at a height of 200 meters above the ground. What horizontal distance does the package fall before landing? Find the velocity of the package just before it hits the ground. We're going to handle this in a very similar way. We're going to choose our origin system at the top with down as positive in the direction. The initial position and final, the initial position is zero, final position x, we don't know, y is 200, we have initial velocity in the x direction, zero velocity in the y, acceleration is zero, acceleration in the y direction is 9.8, and we don't know time. Basically going through this a little faster because it's very similar to the last problem. So, we're going to look in the x direction. x equals x initial plus v initial x times t. And guess what? We don't know x and we don't know time. So we can't use that equation. We can't use the x equation. We're going to look in the y direction. y equals y initial plus v initial y t plus one half a t squared. And what we get when we do look at this is say y initial and v naught y go to zero, so we get y equals one half a t squared, and we can solve for how long this is in the air. Again, t is going to equal the square root of two times y divided by the acceleration, so two times 200 meters divided by 9.8 meters per second, and we take the square root of that. So the time in the air is going to equal 6.389 seconds. I wanted to take that out to several extra digits so I don't get rounding errors when we look in the x direction. And in the x direction we use the first equation again x equals x initial plus v initial x times time. And when we just we can just plug and chug at this point. 30 meters per second is our velocity and it's traveling for 6.389 seconds and it's going to travel 192 meters. So what horizontal distance does it does the package fall before hitting the land? It travels 192 meters and um, there you go. I certainly hope this helped. Um, good luck.